Starting today, a new gun law is now in effect in Maryland. A ban on 45 different types of so-called weapons and 10 round limit on gun magazines in Maryland. They're not useful for self-defense. They just don't need to be in every household in the United States. Maryland passed sweeping gun control measures after the 2012 massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut. Studies show that more guns everywhere don't make us safer. If that was the case, we'd be the safest country in the world. Fourth Circuit to rehear Bianchi versus Brown. The United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit has thrust itself into the center of a heated legal battle by deciding to rehear arguments in the case of Bianchi versus Brown. This case is pivotal as it involves a constitutional challenge to a Maryland law that bans attack arms. The roots of this legal saga trace back to 2013 when Maryland enacted its ban on attack arms in response to the horrific mass slaying at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. The tragedy claimed the lives of 20 children and six adults, sparking nationwide calls for stricter arm control measures. The court's decision to rehear the case comes after a previous oral argument session before a three-judge panel in December 2022 yielded no decision. The complexity surrounding the interpretation of constitutional rights and public safety considerations have likely prompted the full court's intervention. Attorney General Brown underscored the association between mass slayings and attack arms, emphasizing the imperative of enacting common-sense armed safety laws to protect lives. The decision to rehear the case in front of the full court indicates a recognition of the gravity of the matter and its potential implications for public safety. Meanwhile, the Firearms Policy Coalition made headlines with the announcement that the U.S. Supreme Court has granted, vacated, and remanded its lawsuit, Bianchi v. Froesch, which challenges Maryland's ban on so-called attack arms. All new tonight, semi-automatic weapons are banned in Maryland, but a federal appeals court is weighing whether to change that. Maryland's ban on certain style weapons and gun magazines is unconstitutional. Studies show that more guns everywhere don't make us safer. If that was the case, we'd be the safest country in the world. They're not useful for self-defense. They just don't need to be in every household in the United States. This development follows the Supreme Court's recent ruling in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association, Inc. versus Bruin, prompting a reconsideration of the case by the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. The Bianchi lawsuit, originally filed in December 2020, faced dismissal by both the court and the Fourth Circuit, citing precedent set by the Colby v. Hogan decision. However, FPC's petition for Sitirari with the Supreme Court kept the case in limbo, awaiting the outcome of NYSRPA v. Bruin. With the Bruin decision now in hand, the case returns to the Fourth Circuit for further consideration, presenting an opportunity to clarify and assert Second Amendment rights. FPC's Policy Counsel Matthew LaRosiere hailed the Supreme Court's action as a crucial moment in the fight to protect the right to own common arms. He emphasized the need for clear standards from the Supreme Court to prevent undue restrictions on arm ownership, advocating for the affirmation of Second Amendment rights. Furthermore, the Supreme Court's decision has broader implications beyond Bianchi v. Froesch. The vacating and remanding of three other Second Amendment lawsuits ANJ RPC v. Bruck, Duncan v. Bonta, and Young v. Hawaii underscore the significance of these legal battles in shaping the landscape of arm rights and regulations across different states. The legal developments surrounding attack arms bans and Second Amendment challenges underscore the ongoing debate over arm rights and regulations in the U.S. The Supreme Court's actions have far-reaching consequences, setting precedents that impact state laws and regulations across the country. Individuals interested in supporting pro-rights lawsuits and initiatives can join the FPC Grassroots Army or make tax-deductible donations to the FPC Action Foundation. FPC's efforts extend beyond arm rights to encompass broader issues of constitutional liberties and limited government, reflecting a commitment to defending fundamental freedoms. The rehearing of Bianchi v. Brown and the Supreme Court's actions on related cases signal a critical juncture in Second Amendment jurisprudence. These legal proceedings have the potential to shape the landscape of arm rights and regulations in the U.S., influencing policies that impact individual liberties and public safety alike. Legal Analysis and Implications 
The NBank Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals recently issued a significant ruling regarding Maryland's ban on attack-style arms, overturning a prior panel decision and upholding the ban as constitutional. This decision marks a pivotal moment in the ongoing debate surrounding arm rights and regulations in the U.S. The ban, originally enacted in response to the tragic 2012 Sandy Hook massacre, was expanded by Maryland to include 81 models of military-style arms and large-capacity mags. The Fourth Circuit's ruling on Tuesday deemed these arms and mags as not protected by the Second Amendment, emphasizing their potential for harm and military utility. In the comprehensive 116-page decision authored by U.S. Circuit Judge Robert King, the court provided a detailed overview of recent mass slayings where attack rifles and high-capacity mags were utilized. These tragic events, including the shootings in Aurora, San Bernardino, Orlando, Virginia Tech, Fort Hood, and Tucson, underscored the devastating impact of military-style arms on innocent lives. The case at hand, Colby v. Hogan, questioned whether the banned arms and mags qualified as dangerous and unusual arms, a distinction that falls outside the scope of the Second Amendment according to Supreme Court precedent. Starting today, a new gun law is now in effect in Maryland. It doesn't identify whether or not it's a uh, AR-15 or a 22 pistol. Weapons and high-capacity gun magazines have no place in our civil society. We're confident that ultimately our law will be held constitutional. Previously, a three-judge panel of the Fourth Circuit had vacated a lower court ruling that upheld the ban, arguing that the arms in question were indeed protected by the Second Amendment. However, this decision was reconsidered when the case was reheard en banc. In its ruling, the full appeals court voted 10 to 4 to uphold Maryland's ban, reasoning that the arms and mags included in the ban are primarily designed for military use rather than civilian self-defense. The majority opinion drew parallels with the landmark Supreme Court case District of Columbia v. Heller, which emphasized the distinction between arms suitable for military service and those intended for individual self-defense. Judge King, writing for the majority, asserted that the banned attack arms and large-capacity mags are exceptionally lethal arms of war that have no place in civilian settings. The court concluded that such arms fall outside the protection of the Second Amendment. However, four dissenting judges argued that attack arms and large-capacity mags are commonly possessed by law-abiding Americans for lawful purposes thus warranting protection from the Second Amendment. They emphasize the rights of individuals to possess arms commonly used for self-defense, challenging the majority's characterization of these arms as dangerous and unusual. Maryland's ban encompasses specific models and features, targeting semi-auto center-fire rifles with detachable mags and additional military-style features. Additionally, the law restricts the sale or transfer of mags capable of holding more than 10 rounds, with violators facing potential imprisonment. A ban on 45 different types of so-called weapons and 10-round limit on gun magazines in Maryland. A federal appeals court panel ruled Maryland's law banning semi-automatic weapons and high-capacity mag magazines. Some rights advocates want it overturned and point to a recent Supreme Court ruling striking down a concealed handgun requirement in New York. Banned weapons are not protected by the Second Amendment to the Constitution. In response to the ruling, the National Rifle Association expressed its intention to continue advocating for the rights of law-abiding Americans to possess arms for self-defense. While not directly involved in the case, the NRA supported the plaintiffs challenging the ban and vowed to pursue further legal avenues, including appealing the issue to the U.S. Supreme Court. Upholding Maryland's Attack Arms Ban In a recent decision by the Fourth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, Maryland's ban on 45 types of attack arms and its restriction on arm mags to 10 rounds were affirmed, sparking both acclaim and dissent in legal and public spheres. The 10-4 ruling, authored by Judge Robert King, asserted that the arms prohibited under Maryland's law do not fall under the purview of the Second Amendment. King emphasized that the Supreme Court's precedent in District of Columbia v. Heller explicitly excluded coverage for arms deemed arms of war, a category to which the banned arms belong. Maryland Attorney General Brian Frosch, a key advocate for the law's enactment in 2013, 
hailed the decision as crucial for public safety, particularly in the aftermath of tragic events like the Sandy Hook massacre. Frosch emphasized the necessity of regulating arms that have been instrumental in mass slayings across the country. However, dissenting judge William Traxler strongly rebuked the majority opinion, arguing that it disregarded the fundamental right to bear arms guaranteed by the Second Amendment. Traxler criticized the majority for not subjecting the law to strict scrutiny, a higher standard of review for assessing its constitutionality. The NRA condemned the ruling, asserting that the ban infringes on the rights of law-abiding citizens to possess commonly used arms for self-defense. The NRA highlighted the popularity of AR-15 rifles, one of the banned arms, and emphasized the need to uphold Second Amendment protections. Maryland passed sweeping gun control measures after the 2012 massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut. The General Assembly has every right and should defend Marylanders from these weapons of mass destruction. Gives law-abiding gun owners the right to use these weapons, whether for sport or to hunt. The legal journey of Maryland's band has been tumultuous, with initial challenges and subsequent appeals shaping its trajectory. U.S. District Judge Catherine Blake initially upheld the ban in 2015, but a divided three-judge panel of the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled differently in 2022 prompting further review by the full appeals court. The legislative context of Maryland's Firearm Safety Act reflects a concerted effort to respond to tragedies like the Sandy Hook shooting and prioritize public safety. Judge King underscored the legislative prerogative in enacting such measures, highlighting the judiciary's limited role in scrutinizing legislative judgments absent constitutional violations. The decision to uphold Maryland's attack arms ban carry significant legal and societal implications. It reaffirms the state's authority to enact regulations aimed at curbing armed crime while reigniting debates over the scope of Second Amendment protections and the balance between individual rights and public safety. As legal battles continue, the Maryland law stands as a focal point in the broader discourse surrounding armed control in the United States. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.